<clears throat> For the record, my name is Greg Nance. I proudly represent Kitsap in the 23rd Legislative District, and I'm also a lifelong ferry rider, and that's the spirit in which I bring this bill forward today. Growing up in Kitsap, I would ride the ferry into Seattle for school field trips. I would ride the ferry for basketball and baseball tournaments. Um, I would ride the ferry to go to Mariner games to watch King Griffey Jr., my favorite player, at the Kingdom. My dad commuted five days a week every day for 32 years. That's how he provided for our family. Um, he put food on the table and he eventually sent three kids to college um, by riding that ferry. And across the West Sound and many communities in the San Juans, Whidbey, Vashon, Kitsap, Tacoma, West Seattle, Clinton, Coopville, Port Townsend, you would hear similar stories. For us, the ferry is a lifeline for economic opportunity, for connection. Um, and for many of us, we could set our watch by the ferries. You could count on our ferry to run on time reliably every time. Across 32 years, my dad can count on one hand the ferry disruptions as a commuter. We now know on the Transportation Committee the same way we know across the state that our ferry service is no longer delivering to that standard. In the first fiscal quarter of 2024, we already have 1,069 canceled sailings. Every one of those canceled sailings are folks missing work, folks missing school, folks missing medical appointments. Every one of those is real human cost and great economic cost to our state as well. I've been hearing it firsthand at Fix Our Ferries town halls across Kitsap in Kingston, in Bainbridge, in Bremerton. And I know uh, those of us representing ferry districts hear it all the time. And those of us that actually don't represent ferry dependent districts are starting to feel the cost to our small businesses, the cost to our tourism providers and others. That is the spirit by which we bring this forward. And to be clear, we need immediate relief. Um, fortunately, y'all have been working really, really hard over the last several sessions to provide that immediate relief. I'm heartened to see several governors request uh, in the budget that actually gets to building more vessels, to bringing on more of our ferry workforce. Um, a lot of those are great ideas. They're sound policy that I support, that I encourage. At the same time, we need to take an honest look about how we got to this place of chronically underfunding our system for a quarter century. For 25 years, I don't think we provided our ferry service the resources it needed. We need to get down to the basics and provide the foundational investments to rebuild our fleet, to reconnect Washington, to provide a vital public service once more. That's the spirit of this Washington State Ferry 75 working group. Soon, WSF will ring in its 75th anniversary. And without a doubt, our fleet will be in worse shape on our 75th anniversary than it is today. How can we go about rebuilding public trust and public confidence? I think it begins by inviting our neighbors, the, the folks riding the ferries, to the table to be part of those solutions. That's the spirit behind this proposal. Behind this proposal is bringing our friends in labor, a uh, bipartisan group of legislators to the table from both chambers. I'm grateful for the 27 of y'all that signed on as co-sponsors. I got a ton of great feedback from y'all. I want to thank the Gov's office for uh, lots of feedback. We went through seven iterations of this. Beth Redfield is a saint for working through this. And for my neighbors behind me, many of which we'll hear from, that bring a small business vantage, that bring the vantage of county commissioner, uh, the vantage of a family uh, man and woman trying to do the best for their family and the real human cost here. It's going to take all of us working together to fix our ferries. The purpose of this legislation is to plant the right seeds, calculate the real costs, and then find the dedicated funding to move forward. And with that, I really appreciate your consideration. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Are there any questions by members of the committee? Representative Dent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is an interesting bill. Uh, but just uh, what do you hope to learn from this bill? What do you hope that we're going to be able to, the knowledge we'll receive that, that will enable us to, what knowledge we'll be able to use are you hoping to find? Yeah, so one of the things that surprised me joining the legislature, um, I don't have to tell y'all, I'm number 98 of 98 here, just joined in September in my, I think, fourth or fifth week here. One of my surprises digging into ferries, it's really hard to find the data on what is the cost to our state 
from every canceled sailing? How about a delay? Um, what are the real costs there? And as I dug in, it was a big surprise to me that we don't have that data, uh, despite a lot of studies we've done in the past and several previous commissions or working groups. So one of them is, would love to have that data readily at our fingertips to inform policymakers, to inform our friends in the executive. And I had a great honor in November as the, as the new guy getting to represent Kitsap in our great state at the uh, White House Infrastructure Forum. And while I was sharing more about our ferries and how we need federal help, I heard from the Biden administration that we need to bring data, we need to bring documentation, and we need to bring designs to the table. And I'm realizing as I went back to try to do my homework, we don't yet have that. And none of this is to knock the hard work. We have 1,800 very hardworking folks at WSF. I've loved meeting the crew. I've met over 100 of our team now, great folks. We have leadership that's working very, very hard, has a lot of great ideas that I can learn from. Um, at the same time, we need to do our best to equip them. Right now, we, we've secured $140 million in federal funds over the last two years, which that is a great start. I commend that hard work. And Representative, to answer your question directly, let's build on that success. Uh, the Puget Sound is a, an incredibly strategic region for the Department of Defense and for our federal government. We have six naval bases. We have one of the largest caches of nuclear weapons anywhere in the world. In Puget Sound, we need to be building the resilience here. We need to be building our economy here, building our national security here, building American shipbuilding capacity here. There's a, a keen federal interest, way more than just funding 10 to 12 percent of our ferry service through federal funds. So that's what I'd like to be able to bring to Congress in 2025. Thank you. Okay, Representative Gaynor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, Representative Nance, for um, bringing this forward. But to follow up with this, and if if this data is for federal funding. I mean, that's that's great, but we still have to have a plan here. I mean, the actual, you know, vessel construction, um, you know, having the the ability, to, the shipbuilders, of, you know, available, and also just having a plan for replacement, which we've had a number of iterations here in just the last few years. And we had a plan initially, I believe, a bill in 2019 that, that actually set out a plan. And that's, we've deviated from that. We've had challenges with the, the bids that have gone out and all. So, I mean, how, it's great to have the data, which I think is very important. It's always good to make good decisions with good information. Uh, but how, what, what are you going, what are you hoping to, uh, I guess, drill down then on some of those other actual nuts and bolts of the construction and, and getting vessels on the water? Great question. And I, I literally wake up every morning thinking about that, and that's what I'm thinking about as I'm getting ready to go to bed. Um, our neighbors are hurting. We need immediate relief. Uh, and to your point, I got long-winded there trying to, rep to answer Representative Dent's question. Um, we need to bring back a kind of a tactical game plan, the first day of our legislative session 2025, bipartisan ideas and policies that we can hit the ground running with. That's my aim. And truthfully, we've actually studied a lot of this before. Given our supply chains and the haywire state of that across the country, I think we need to take a new look than just dusting off a 2012 or 2014 study. We're in a brave new world, and I think with that new data, that new information, we're going to be able to take an honest look at it and make the trade-offs that we now need to make to make every tax dollar go farther for our neighbors. 